build them up. Tremendous praise and worship today. Awesome worship song. Thank you, gentlemen. Praise God. Well, I want to say Happy New Year to everyone. We still have people coming in. And so if you all could do me one favor, because what you see are a lot of empty seats. I know everyone likes to sit on the ends. But if you all could, if there are empty seats in the middle, could you just slide in so that we can get this uh, group that's standing here at the door looking for seats. If you're, there's seats in the middle, could everyone just slide in? so that the ushers can fill in from the outside in and people don't have to step over other individuals. If you all could do that for me, be greatly appreciated. Just slide in and they can fill in. Praise God. Has God been good to anyone in this building? Praise God. Anybody glad to see another year? Come on. What, what a, what a, what, what, there's no better way to start your year off than to be in the house of God hearing the word of God. Anybody glad you're not in the hospital this morning? I'd rather be here than in the best hospital under the best doctors receiving the best care. I'd rather be right here in the house of God sitting under Dr. Jesus and hearing the word of God that's able to heal not just my physical body but my soul. All right, praise God. still have a group gathering in the back, and so it would help us again at least on the floor. We have seats up in the risers uh, as well. So once we fill in on the floor, we can begin to take people up to the risers. But if everyone would scoot in, uh, that would help us out greatly this morning. And then once all that's filled in, if the ministers would slide over, we'll fill in on the outside uh, and on that front row. Praise God. All right. Praise God. How many of y'all, again, glad you're able to be out here this morning? I won't be before you long today because there's a lot that we want to do in today's service. So my assignment today, how many of y'all are new to Linked Up Church since we came to Powder Springs? Raise your hand. You, you just started attending since we came to Powder Springs. Praise God. Look at all those hands around here. How many of y'all are new to Linked Up Church within the last year, last 12 months? Lift your hands if you're new to Linked Up Church. Wow, look at all of those hands. All right. Spirit of God told me something about this particular area that he was planting us in. And he told me that there would be people in this area and in this city that know the area, know the land, and that God is sending you here to help us build something that's going to impact not just this city, but the entire Cobb County area. And so today my assignment and my job is to make sure everyone, old, new, in between, you clearly understand what this church is called to do because if God sent you here, then you are called to help us do what you're getting ready to hear today. So I want to minister on the subject today of Linked Up Church and give you some powerful things to pray about over the next 21 days. Go with me to Colossians chapter 3. A lot of you all don't know our story. Uh, this church started five years ago yesterday. We are five years old as of yesterday, January the 5th. And so whether you were here day one or, or you just came uh, last week or you're going to join today, whatever your role, whatever your part is, on behalf of my wife and I, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to say thank you. We would not have gotten here without you. If you're watching online today, thank you for your prayers, your continued support. If you're not able to make it here but you're a member of Linked Up Church, thank you. We couldn't have gotten here without you. And so let's read Colossians chapter 3, you version Bible app. Uh, the outline is right there on that Bible app. Just go to the events section, click on Linked Up Church, and you'll see this outline. Linked Up Church. My wife and I, we were sitting on a couch uh, five years ago and, and really about five and a half years ago now, and, and we knew that God had called us to pastor, and, and we just asked ourselves, who are we? What's our DNA? And we both began to talk about how much we love God and how much we love people and how much we love connecting God uh, connecting people to God and each other. And so that word connect just kind of kept coming up every time we talked. So this church was going to be named a whole lot of things. It was going to be connect. Uh, at one point, I think it was co-link us. Uh, it, it was a whole lot of different things. From that word connect, we were trying to figure out 
what to call the church because that's fundamentally who we are. So I get up off of the couch. I'm going to the restroom, and I, all of a sudden I look back and I say, babe, what about linked up? And uh, the Lord said, and she kind of resonated with her, and we began to research and search to see if anyone had that name. No one had that name. And so then the Lord told me to go to Colossians chapter 3, and he just shared the whole vision with me that I'm getting ready to share with you all on today. And so from that moment, we researched on that day. There was no one using linked up. Go figure. Of course, once we researched it, somebody took it the next day. Right? And so we ended up, it would have cost us $25 if we would have locked it up that day. It ended up costing us a couple of thousand dollars because that's how people earn their living out there. They see what you're searching for, they lock it up knowing that you want it so that you have to come back and buy it from them at a higher price. Bottom line is, folks, linked up, there's no other church in the world named linked up church. In the world. Listen to this. This is how you know God carved out this space for you. And there's no, we own all of the digital real estate for linked up. Come on, somebody ought to give God glory for that. So what I believe is he tucked it away until we got the revelation of it. He tucked it away until we got the revelation of it, reserved it for us so that we can do what it is that he's called us to do. And as long as we do what he's called us to do, there will always be provision to get that done. Is everybody listening out here? All right? So, so now I'm going to share that. Go with me to Colossians chapter 4. We basically have four core values here at Linked Up Church. I'm not going to dig into this deep because you're going to hear this. Uh, you'll know this frontwards and backwards if you're a member here. And so we have four core values. They are to connect people to God. We want to get people saved. How I many you know the primary reason God calls a church is to save people? Right? And so the biggest net that we can cast is on Sunday mornings. And that's when you need to bring your unsaved friends, the lost, all of that on Sunday morning. Because there's no greater net than we have on Sunday morning. Our second core value is to connect people to family. The best way that we deliver that here is through small groups. Right? I mean, when you get saved, you need a new group to hang out with. You need new friends, new people to hang out with that are like-minded, new marriages. Hello, somebody. Right? New marriage, friends, all kind of things. The best way we deliver that is through small groups. And so your family is also important to God, your natural family, but your spiritual family is important uh, as well. And how I many you know a lot of times our spiritual family ends up becoming closer than our natural family in a lot of cases. The next purpose or the next uh, value is we connect people to purpose. We try to help people figure out who they are and what it is God's called them to do. And then that's in the natural out there in the workplace, marketplace, but then also their gifting. Where is it that God wants you to serve? How I many know he didn't send you here to sit on the bench? He sent you here to get in the game. So our job is to help you figure out how you're wired and how you function and then get you in the game either through small groups or dream teams. We believe you're a connected member of Linked Up Church when you're a part of one of those through. You're an attendee. You're still an, a member of Linked Up Church, but you just attend until you become a part of small groups or dream team. Now you're connected to Linked Up Church. And then finally, we want to connect people to community. God plants churches and communities to change the community should never be said about us if we ever leave the community no one ever knew we were there in the first place so the anointing that is on this place should spread out throughout this entire community and people should look up a couple of years from now and say ever since that church moved there this whole area has come up right all kind of businesses coming here housing market is going up all kind of things are happening because we're here, we're starting businesses, we're re-renovating uh, re uh, homes. We're just bringing the entire area up because God planted us here to change the community. All right, let's read these verses. Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 21, New King James Version, deal primarily with connecting people to God and family. I'm going to go through these quickly today because we have a lot to cover. So I want to give you a synopsis on the front end and share the verses that support that. Verse 1 says, if then you were raised with Christ. So notice the moment you become saved, 
you are now raised up. How many know you're now way up? The moment you receive Jesus Christ, he brings you up to where he's at. Right? You're no longer who you used to be. So if then you were raised with Christ, notice what he says. Seek the things for where I have brought you. So now your thinking has to change. Now your, what you pursue and your drive has to change. Now you have to start thinking about the level that he's brought you to. So now that he's raised you up with him, how many know your thinking has to match the level that he's raised you to? So in him, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're no longer a sinner saved by grace. You are saved by grace and the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And therefore, you're just as much entitled to everything that he left for Jesus. It now belongs to you. But if you don't renew your thinking to that, you'll always think about who you used to be versus what you actually are and what he made you. So all your thinking now has to come up to the level that he's raised you. That's the connect. That's the linked up. You've got to stay linked up and connected to God if you're going to live the way he's called you to live. So if then you were raised with Christ, notice your desires change. You seek those things which are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your mind on things above. That means fix your mind on that. So that tells you then if you can fix your mind on things above, you can also fix your mind on things on the earth. So if you're still struggling with the lower level things, it's probably because my mind is always on lower level things. Right? But if I set my mind on higher level things where Christ is seated, I mean, it's going to change my daily activities, change my choice of friends, change my conversation. It's going to change everything about me because I fixed my mind on something higher than the lower life that I used to live. So he says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are, you die and your life is hidden with Christ Jesus. That's good news to me, folks. That means that your old life has died. Your old nature, the moment you become born again, your old nature died. Folks, I want to share some good news with you. At salvation, you can stop smoking. You can stop drinking. You can stop sleeping with people that you're not married to. Come on, somebody. All of that can happen the moment Jesus Christ comes to live on the inside of you. Everything new now just becomes a process, but the old you die, listen to this, and it's hidden in Christ Jesus. So that means all your wrongs, he hid them inside of him. So if he doesn't remember them anymore, then why should you remember them anymore? You're not who you used to be, folks. Come on, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Stop labeling yourself. You're not a loser. You're not a failure. You're a winner. I don't care if you have been divorced before. That's not the end of your life. God has a great marriage out in front of you if you'll see yourself the way he made you. I don't care what it is, folks. It's all hidden in him, and you get a fresh start in Christ Jesus. I love that about being a Christian. So when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So our job is to help renew your thinking at the point of salvation. We want to tell you from day one who you are and label you differently from day one so that you start seeing yourself as what he made you and not where you came from. Verse 5, therefore, this is your responsibility. Put to death your members. This is your responsibility. This is not the church's responsibility. It says, therefore, put to death. That, that phrase there means reckon these members as dead. So if you're unmarried in here, you've got to really trust that your organs and your members, you've got to trust the word of God here, and you've got to shut them off. And then let the Spirit of God shut them back on or turn them back on at the right time. Oh, Lord, y'all going to make this tough on me today. Then he says, put to death or mortify fornication. These are all sexual sins. Minister Johnny, can you come here for a moment? I just want you to lay down here on the floor and just liking yourself as dead. Turn around the other way. Yeah, that way. Liking yourself is dead. 
Now, you're not dead. You're just kind of liking yourself as dead. All right? And this is his lovely wife. Diane, can you come over here for a moment? See, a dead man doesn't see a lot of stuff. Right? If he like and considers himself dead. Now, I want you to walk past your husband. Notice, a dead man didn't notice that. You all see that? And that's a choice to say, you know what? When I'm single, I'm going to deactivate this part of who I am. That's a choice. It wouldn't be in the word if, he did, if it wasn't possible for us to do it. Right? Now, let me show you the opposite of that. He can be saved, but if he doesn't deactivate, same woman can walk by, and this time he's going to act like a carnal Christian. Go ahead, walk by. He's going to see everything about her. He's going to wake him up. He's going to stand up on his feet. He's going to begin to pursue that. <laughs> Go ahead, head in that direction. Go ahead. Yeah. Right? Help him up. Let's help him up. <laughs> Got to get him in better shape. He couldn't get himself up there. <laughs> Does everybody understand what I'm talking about there? You have to do that. No one can do that for you. God wants a clean church. He, don't want, he doesn't want a church where everyone in the church acts like the world. He doesn't want a church where you can get as much at church as you get out there in the world. So what we're called to do is get you cleaned up. Change your thinking. See your body as valuable as the temple of the holy God. Right? See yourself as bought with a price. Therefore, you're going to glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to God. All right? And so he says, therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Those are literally your organs. Put them to death. I need a better amen in here. That's why I can't move on from this part. How many unmarried people in here? Raise your hand right now. Say this with me by faith. Say, as of today, I'm putting my members and my organs to death. So, uh, why'd you put your hand down when I got there to that part? <laughs> Keep your hand up in the air. Keep it up in the air. Say, I'm deactivating until the appropriate time to activate in Jesus' name. Then after you get married, you can have all you want. And feel good about it, too. The angels will celebrate and rejoice in heaven over that act. It's a holy act in the kingdom. Let's keep going. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, all sexual sins, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God, see, it kindles the anger of God on the sons and daughters of disobedience. I mean, we don't want to kindle God's anger against us. Right? Kindles that. And what you, you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these things as well. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. How I many you know when we get saved, we've got to stop cussing? That was five amens in here. I said, how many of you know once we get saved, we need to stop cussing? Amen. God doesn't understand that. You know how many Christians say that? God understands. If he understands, then why would he say put away filthy communication? He doesn't understand, and you can't overcome that. I used to be a cussing Christian. First gave my life to Christ. I was a college athlete. I played college sport. I mean, no cussing and playing sports went hand to hand. I mean, we just cussed the whole time we played. Imagine doing that from the time you're six, seven, eight years old. You go to the park, all the grown people cussing. You don't have a name. You a little. Get your little. Little. So that's all I knew, cussing and playing sports, right? But then I get saved, and I realize I got to stop cussing. So for me to stop cussing, I had to stop playing sports for a season until I got control of my mouth. 
then I could go back and play sports without being a bad witness. All right. We want to help you with this, folks. Best way this is carried out is through small groups. I mean, we need accountability. We need somebody else that knows what we struggle with and can help hold us accountable. You, you don't never want to be an island to yourself. See, Satan wants to isolate you and make you feel like nobody else understands what you're going through. But when you get in groups with other people and there's accountability, now people can pray for you. They can encourage you. Come on, they can uplift you. And so he says, put off these things here. It's like in the morning, it's like take one outfit off and put on a, another outfit. It says, do not lie one to another since you have put off the old man or the old nature with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge. So notice the new man or the new nature has to get new information in order to act new. Best way, again, we can deliver that here after you get saved is through small groups or on a dream team where you get around other people and you learn different things. You come to church, you get new information. You don't grow by coming to church. You only grow when you take the outline home and study it for yourself. Hello, somebody. And then on purpose, apply it to your life. It's not what you do on Sunday morning that matters. It's what you do when you wake up on Monday morning that matters. So it's renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Notice in verse 11, God wants a diverse church. It says, where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all in all, regardless of your ethnicity, your economic background, what side of the tracks you grew up on. God loves all white people. God loves all Indians. God loves all black people. And we all need to find ways to worship together. There is no segregation in heaven. There is no east side and west side and, and suburbs and city. For we are all children of the most high God, and we've got to learn how to value each other, love each other, support each other, lift each other up, create opportunities for each other. Come on, I need a better amen in the house of God. We need better hiring practices. We've got to make sure that the church looks like diversity. Verse 12, therefore, as the elect of God, chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness. See, you take off the old stuff, put on the new stuff. Notice you cannot put new stuff on the old stuff. You got to take off the old stuff first before you put on new stuff. All right? How many of y'all love the, the dress? How many of y'all love the, you know, I notice with my family, you know, my daughter, the spirit is on her now. But anytime they get new clothes, they don't like wearing old shoes with new outfits. Unless those shoes are gently used. Y'all get a picture now? So work on, how many of y'all know there are areas that all of us need to get off of us? Make that a priority in 2019. Don't carry that with you all throughout 2019. We've got systems here in place to help you with that. Small groups, all kind of other things here. Notice what he goes on to say here. Put on here. So we're taking off and then we're putting on. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. How I many know that all of that happens in small groups? To be around people, you got to learn how to put up with people. Right? And anytime you're around them long enough, there will be something you'll need to forgive them for. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Amen. Biggest challenge with the body of Christ is we run away from these things. Moment conflict rises, we leave. Instead of being Christians and talking it out face to face, not hiding behind emails and social media. Amen. Hello. But, but being real believers, and if you have a fault, right, go to your brother and tell him his fault between he and the alone. What we wanted to go do is tell everybody else their faults and create a bigger problem. 
when it wasn't between them, you, them, and everybody else. It was between the two of you. See, being around other people will help you grow up. So we've got to learn how to put up with each other. We've got to learn how to forgive each other. That's best carried out throughout uh, small groups here. Forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, watch this now. Even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Folks, stop giving up on people. What if Christ would have gave up on you? All right, let me ask it another way. How many of y'all have done things that you know if you would have did that to somebody else, you would have gave up on you? We all have. See, when I just started thinking about all the wrong that I've done and Christ still worked with me, how can I put somebody else in prison? Over a misunderstanding. I'm never going to, never going to fool with them again? Really? Never? I'm done with you? And you'll notice most of this happens within the context of church and family. Because those are the people that are the closest to us. So our job is to help you connect to God, stay connected to both your spiritual family and your natural family. Folks, look around this room. This is your family. Wave to your family members. This is a family reunion. Every time we come together on Sunday mornings, the family is coming back together. We need to look out for each other. We need to forgive each other. Folks, we're better together than we are apart all day long. When I was studying this last night, man, the Lord just showed me something here. He showed me eight churches, eight of them, in it, metropolitan Atlanta that came from one church. And you know what he told me? He said, I called one of them, and everyone else was supposed to help them. We'd be so much bigger and better if we just learn how to forgive each other. I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen right now. Eight churches that all came from one. He didn't tell me who he did. He said, I called one, and everybody else was supposed to help him. And listen to this, what he showed me. They still would have got the same things that they wanted had they been patient. So you still would have had eight churches around metropolitan Atlanta under an umbrella with support, with prayer, with resources. But today it just doesn't take much from us, for us. All right, one little act and I'm gone. <laughs> I'm done. Listen, let's not give up on each other. Can anybody help us with that around Linked Up Church? Anybody committed to helping us with that? Yeah. Some of these, we got to go back and get and help them out and show them the love of God. Not just talk about it on Sunday morning, but go demonstrate it. There's some per situations I came from. I need to go and love on them. I didn't say get under them. I said go and love on them. Just to show that as my brother and sister in Christ, I love you. And I appreciate all that you've done for me. How many of it's time for the body of Christ to grow up? Right. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. It's the glue that keeps us together. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are called in one body and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Notice here, teaching and admonishing one another again in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Notice the one another again, folks. How many know we're not growing together in church? 
When we leave church and we get together in homes and we go back over the message together and we get together in, at, at Starbucks and different places like that, I mean, no, that's when we get to admonish each other and build each other up, share the word of God with each other. And as a community and as a family, we get better together. If all we're doing, folks, is seeing each other on Sunday, we're missing this. Right? And so he goes on to say here in verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So that's connecting people to God, connecting people to your spiritual family, but God's concerned about your natural family as well. It's interesting that the first thing that he says here about the Christian home is wives submit to your own husband. So God believes the best way to fix all marriages and households is to get these women to submit. I hear all the brothers out there. I don't hear no ladies out there. Ladies like, no, no. <laughs> right? Let's not, let's keep reading. <laughs> so he says, wives, submit yourselves. It's interesting there to your own husband. That's a little nugget for all the ladies in here. So often you go outside of your home to discuss problems that are in your home. When the best people to work through something are the two people that are involved in it. Just a little side nugget. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, but let's keep reading. As is fitting in the Lord. So as it is appropriate in the Lord. Right? And so literally what he's saying is follow your husband as he follows Christ. Submit to your husband as he submits to Christ. Right? If you want to make it easy for your wife to submit to you, she should see how submitted you are to Christ. Come on, I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen. Literally, you're trying to get her to do stuff that she doesn't see you do for God. You want her to obey you, but she's got to see you obey God. Husbands, love your wives. And do not be bitter towards them. Interesting insertion there. Do not be bitter. Don't allow yourself to be embittered by your wife. Now, right in that verse, he tells you how to do that. You can't love her and be bitter with her at the same time. So you're either bitter or you love her. But the only way to not be bitter is to love her. Love her the way Christ loves you. Right? But watch this. You cannot give her what you don't have. So if you have not first received love, you can't give love. So your first responsibility is not to your wife. Your first responsibility is to God. Once that relationship is right vertically, then horizontally you can love her the way she deserves to be loved and you won't let bitterness creep in. How I many you know with us men, it's easy, for that to, it's easy for that to creep in once we get outside of love. Once we let love live in our hearts, then it's really hard to be bitter towards myself because the two of us are one. So I'm not going to treat myself bad. Hell, I don't hate me. I don't dislike me. I don't disdain me. So I can't give that to me who is my wife. Thank you all for that enthusiasm in here today. So husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter. Children, obey your parents in all things. Clean up your room. That's all things. <laughs> I just knew parents. I knew I, knew, I just knew the parents were in all things. Well, I don't agree with everything my parents asked me to do. What's left after all? Children, obey your parents in all things. Now, my baby girl is going off to college today. I'm, I'm happy and I'm sad. She's sitting right there. Man, I don't know how to describe to you the emotion of today for me. I don't know how to describe that to you. I love that girl like, listen, like wet loves water. 
Any fathers in here understand what I'm talking about? I will kill a brick. <laughs> but at the same time, I've got to trust her to God now. We've done our part. Now we've got to give her to God and let God take her from here. But you better know if you ever need anything, your daddy, just like I've been here for you for 18 years, anything that you ever need, you call us first. You don't have to ask anybody for anything. Some boy come up to you talking about, I'll take you around the world. Tell him your daddy has already taken you around the world and will continue to take you around the world until you get married. Keep the cookies in the jar. The one that loves you will make a commitment to you. And there's only one real commitment in this earth, and it's called marriage. Hallelujah. 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 Stretch your hands toward my daughter right now. <laughs> the blood of Jesus protects her. We draw a bloodline around her that Satan cannot befall. And there's not one weapon formed against her that will prosper. She's leaving the house one way. She's going to come back even greater. She has the mind of Christ, an excellent spirit, a pure mind, and a pure body. Everything she puts her hands to will prosper. She'll have success like no other child in the earth. Your grace comes upon her stronger from this day forward. In Jesus' name. So notice, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. You want to teach your children that they want to obey God even more than they want to obey you. And in obeying God, they're pleasing God. And if they please God, they will always please you. That's family, folks. Fathers, provoke not your children lest they become discouraged. I can grow in this area, especially with raising a son. Stretch your hands towards me. And say, Father, Father, grant Pastor Gregory more wisdom on how to raise his son in a way that his son won't be discouraged. In Jesus' name, I receive that by faith. I want to win with my children more than I want to win with this church. Are you listening to me out there? And we need this level of commitment towards our children and towards family, right? Now let's talk about purpose and community. And I'm going to go through these quickly. Purpose and community. Bond servants obey in all things. Other translation says employees obey in all things your employers. According to the flesh, not what I service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, Feeling God, fearing God. So we want to put things in place to help people figure out what their purpose is. We have something here called Job Link, which helps people get gain, gainfully employed or get better employment. We've got here something here called Entrepreneurial Boot Camp. We want to build a community of entrepreneurs. We want to teach deployment at Linked Up Church and not necessarily employment. Having a job is great, but we also want to teach people how to create jobs and how to start businesses. And when they do, we want the whole Linked Up community to support them. Every other culture understands that. I don't know why the church community doesn't understand that. Folks, if we don't support ourselves, then we all won't come up. And we got to train that thinking into our community. So everybody look to your, am I looking right? Look over there. That 33 acres over there, folks, is going to be a community economic development center. where we teach people how to get their lives together and how to start businesses, right? And we're going to create a marketplace community that supports itself. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be happy until everyone's boat in the harbor rises. 
Come on, till everyone is debt free, everyone's house is paid off. Come on, everybody's driving cars that, that they have no notes on. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, let's do it. Can we, come on, can we go for this? Let's get the job done. So we got to teach these kind of things. Community, right? Purpose, all of these things go together. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. As long as we're helping people figure out their purpose, not just outside the four walls of the church, but we've got to help you figure out your wiring and your gifting with inside of the four walls of the church. Got to help you serve in the capacity that you're gifted to serve in. Everyone doesn't need to be in children's church. Come on, if your own children, if you don't have patience with, if, if your own children get on your nerves... You don't need to be in children's church. Right? If teenagers and the way they act and what they do, don't go down there to youth service. If you don't like greeting people, hello, don't be a hostess or an usher. So we've got to help people figure out where they're wired so they can get in the areas where they can bring the most love and joy to other people. That's why we put super greeters on the door. So when you come in, the most bubbly people that we have are there to greet you and say, welcome to Linked Up Church. It's going to be a great day. God's going to bless your life. Right? We need that out on the parking lot. We want every touch to be a special touch because people are in the areas that God has gifted them to serve in. Folks, I want to spread that out throughout this entire community. I want to buy up all the dilapidated property in the city of Powder Springs, fix those properties up, help people who are underemployed, underprivileged, buy houses that they can't afford. Come on, somebody. Let's build our community. Let's build the kingdom of God for the glory of God. Come on, do I have anybody ready to help us today? Let's all stand to our feet. Everyone stand to your feet. Let's lift our hands to the Father today. This is why God sent you to Linked Up Church. If you are currently a member, this is what he called you to help us to do. Connect people to God. We must win the loss. Bring everyone that you know that's not saved, that's out of fellowship, that has left God. Bring them on Sunday morning because that's the best way that we can deliver that. The, let me share this last part. Go ahead and lift your hands to the Father. Begin to worship him. We're going to deliver these values this way through our weekend services where the goal is to reach the lost but also grow up the found. We're also going to have healthy small groups. Here. We want you to live connected and do life together. We've got next steps classes. We're thinking here growth can be measured by steps and not necessarily program. And then our dream team of volunteers. A lot of times we're saying, people are saying, I got to get my life together before I serve. But the reality is serving is what helps you get your life together. People think they need to be mature before they serve. But serving is what helps mature your life while you're serving so that you can be a greater blessing to other people. Let's lift our hands to the Father. Father, there's a grace on this church to do exactly what was described today. I'm praying for every heart in this room, the condition of every heart in this room, Father. If you sent them here, they now further understand what their purpose is. And may we all get busy doing what it is that you've called us to do the way that you've called us to do it. Father, over this season of 21 days of prayer and fasting, I pray over every heart that they'll begin to pray about what's their role and what's their part in the body. There's so many gifts and talents and graces that are out here. There are people with theatrical gifts, people with all kind of different gifts that are in this room. As we spend this 21 days of prayer and fasting, Father, may every gift rise up and come forward and begin to help build the body of Christ with what it is that you've graced them with. And so, Father, I thank you that you will ignite this church towards impact and we'll start it off over these next 21 days of prayer in Jesus' name. So now while everyone is in that heart and in that attitude of prayer today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, let him clean your life up today. You've been 